On the aisle with me, Charles Gross and Leslie Hoban Blake, tonight reviews of The Commons of Pensacola, Sherry, A Midsummer Night's Dream, The Night Alive, and Leslie and I preview the season for this year. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to On the Aisle. I think I said that all in one breath. You did. You were really very good about that. <laughs> Happy New Year, Charlie. Happy New Year, Leslie. Okay, we're, we're set. <laughs> okay. So, would you like to go first or should I? Uh, me. I'll okay, go. you. Just because La you asked first. Me. Thank you. And I'm going to talk about a lady. I'm going to talk about Cherie, who may not have been considered a lady in her day. <laughs> um, the, the lady in question is Colette, the very famous French writer who gave us Gigi. The story Cherie is a loosely adapted story of her own life. And the lady on the cover of the playbill is Martha Clark, who both directed and choreographed mm. this piece. It is a very but short... But she has a star in it. No, no, she has no... She, she is the chore writer. That's she is the choreographer and director, because she's not a... She doesn't dance anymore. She was originally part of Palabolus. She started Palabolus. Right. And, and has become a choreographer instead. But she's not actually in the no, show. No, she's okay. not. In fact, she, what she has is Alexandra Ferri and Herman Cornejo, Mm -hmm. They are incredibly gifted ball ballerino and ballerina. I do not, I am not a balletta main, so I cannot say that I, that I love them, but I saw people there who were drooling about these two people mm -hmm. and saying that, that they were the best people in the whole world. So, and they were lovely to look at for about 10 minutes. Let me tell you the story real quick, because it's done in dance. Amy Irving comes out as the older Cherie, the actress, reading back over her story. And her story is about herself as an older actress with a younger lover. Lovely. It opens up with a bed. They're, they're naked in bed. They get up. Uh, they're not quite naked, but they get up and, and, and uh, through dance. Now, it's dance and it's music. It's all classical music. It's Debussy. It's Ravel. It's Poulenc. I think I'm saying that correctly. Um, I'm not a classical music fan. I'm not a balletta main. Boy, am I coming off like some sort of, you know, uh, woman of the people. But all of that said, it, 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 it had a wonderful, that's the whole story. She has an older lo she's an older woman with a younger lover. They break up, he gets married, he, ha he becomes despondent, and something bad happens, and that's it. It runs about 70, 80 so minutes. So nothing about her work or anything no, like no, that? No, 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 it's just this one story. And Amy Irving is reading the actual uh, lines from Colette, and then they dance. And then she reads, and then they dance. Okay. And then so she reads, and then they dance. So who, so who, <laughs> is, uh, so who is Colette? Colette is the, is the actress reading back the story. She's the well, actress. No, it's Amy Irving is Colette. Amy Irving is, is, <sighs> is, 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 is this like Oklahoma where they have a dancing Colette and an acting Colette? Y yes, I think okay. that's a very good way of putting it, yes. And, and the problem for me is that it was all the same. This, the dancing was the same. It got a little more intense. It got a little more, I love you, I love you, don't leave me. But it was all dancing. There wasn't any you mm -hmm. know, verbiage. It was all, and they are wonderful, dramatic dancers. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a very small theater. We were at the Signature, so you could see things, you mm -hmm. know, no matter where you were sitting. But great, dramatic impulse. Bodies, like you would die for these bodies. And, and, and Amy Irving was, was not chopped liver. And at the piano was a Sarah Rothenberg playing piano through the whole thing. All of mm -hmm. these classical pieces were played live. Right. And, That's and, nice. and it was boring. I'm sorry to say that it was boring because, mm -hmm. a lot of reasons, because, you know, I'm a, I, I'm a, I'm a Monday morning quarterback. I could yes. come in, I could say how we would make it better. But one thing I certainly wouldn't do is have Amy Irving come in and out to tell the story. Either have her sit on the side and stay there and let the dancers do it, or give her different entrances. But she mm -hmm. keeps coming through the same damn door, you know. And, <sighs> and, and they don't have an act and on dancing boyfriend for her. No, no. It's just that the, 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 she reads the story and, and okay, there's so that. She's, so she's kind of from afar. She's, fr she's, the, she's the older woman looking back on the story of right. this even older period of her life. Younger period of her older right. life. But she was still at that time an older woman yes, with a younger yes, man. Yes, she's much older when, when she does it. There's only the okay. three characters, no, no extra people. Got it. And, and that's it. And, you know, it, it reads beautifully. It, it's been made into a movie. It was made into a movie most, most recently with Michelle Pfeiffer which ain't chop liver either. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like that as a movie. <laughs> but, but for other reasons, I didn't care for the movie. And al always the young man is gorgeous. I, I, he was in that mm -hmm. movie too. He has to be, that's the whole point. Mm -hmm. In real life, Colette, the writer, did run away with her uh, uh, stepson, who was somewhat, oh, something like 19 years younger than she was at the time. So she was kind of a female Woody Allen. <laughs> I never thought of her that way. You, you have a way of cutting right to the heart of things, <laughs> Charlie. But in any case, um, I, I don't know how to give playbills to this because I know what the intent was. 
and about any 10 minute segment of it worked perfectly and then right. when you added the next 10 minute segment mm -hmm. it was I just saw so that. So you but ultimately while you're not a dance critic you really didn't doesn't sound like you enjoyed the show. No and it's not because I'm not a dance critic I'm a theater person this is being right. presented as a theater piece okay. and she did the Belle Epoque at Lincoln Center and I died for that it was so beautiful that was a story of Toulouse Lautrec and mm -hmm. she illustrated several of his paintings right. in it and it was magnificent. It was mm -hmm. done, I don't think there were any words in that at all. I think you had okay. to sort of follow. And she did uh, a, a piece on Freud, which mm -hmm. I also didn't care for, but she did the piece about the, the Bruegel painting mm -hmm. that is still famous, that they revived it just now. Uh, uh, so but, I, but getting I, back I, to this piece, Sherry. Well, I'm saying I was disappointed because I had because it's her. Mm -hmm. It's like you're, you're going to talk about somebody that I shouldn't <laughs> say. Right? Can I say? You already said You're going to talk about Julie Tamar. I will be talking so, about Julie So you Tamar. come in with expectations, yes. right? Okay, so I had expectations because it's Martha Clark. Right. It did not meet my expectations. Mm -hmm. It's not fair for me to have expectations, but I'm a human being, you know, so right. aside from being a critic. So in terms of how many playbills would I give it, which is the bottom line on this, I'd give it 2.5. Okay. All right. Fair enough? Okay. Um, I should say this evening, Leslie and I have decided that, that <laughs> in, in honor of our first show for the year, we're going solo on the reviews <laughs> uh, with one of us uh, talking about the show and the other us is making cute comments. Well, we hope that uh, We hope, <laughs> yes, or at least attempting to. Well, yours well as, as, as you said, I went to see mi a Midnight Summer Dream. A and mid I ha a, midnight, uh, a Midsummer Night's Dream, okay. <laughs> midnight I Summer must have been dreaming. Be funny, yes. <laughs> at Theater for a New Audience. But here's the thing, I didn't see it in Manhattan. I saw it in Brooklyn because right. Theater for the New Audience has this gorgeous and very different new theater that's in Brooklyn, very easy mm -hmm. to get to, a lot mm -hmm. easier than going to the paper mill in New Jersey. Um, and it's right near BAM. You can take uh, most. Uh, you can take se several trains, I think the two and the three, and I, I think one of the east side uh, trains yeah, stopped. I'm gonna go to stopped the next show. Stop pretty close there. I'm gonna go to the next show, I'm looking I'll forward to it. I'll tell you, Shakespeare is having a mixed, uh, <laughs> Mixed season. On the one hand, last summer, mm -hmm. there were two excellent mm -hmm. Shakespearean productions mm -hmm. at the Delacorte Theater in Central Park. But pretty much everything I've seen since then has really not been Shakespeare at his best, and that would include Romeo and Juliet on Broadway. Even Twelfth Night? Well, I didn't see Twelfth Night. Oh, so. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Well, I apologize. Okay. So the, the, the last scene, I, w I wanted to see Twelfth oh, Night. okay. But that's, uh, I, I won't get okay, into that. Yeah, another story. Sorry. And this, this is Julie Taymor, who uh, was probably best known for The Lion King, which was incredible, and Spider-Man, which was not. In fact, Spider-Man has closed. And maybe one of these days we'll do a segment on whether a show that runs three years but loses money is a I hit know, or not. I know, and loses so much money, it's unbelievable. Okay. But that's not for tonight. <laughs> and I, I looked at some, at, I look, looking at this production, it looked like at one point that she had kind of gone backstage to the Lion King and taken a few extra <laughs> costumes, and then gone backstage, you know, when they were tearing down Spider-Man, grabbed a couple oh, of wow. harnesses and wires, and, and put them in here. And the result, A Midsummer Night's Dream is, is, a Midsummer Night's Dream is just that. It's, it starts off with a, a royal wedding is being planned, and mm -hmm. a bunch of workers are planning a play. Just because it's Shakespeare, you have a woman who loves this man, but her father wants her to marry somewhere else. <laughs> So, into the woods they have to go. <laughs> but it's a different tale, well, you know. That's Sondheim. That's yes. not Shakespeare. Right, so, well, Sondheim, um, has Sondheim, Sondheim and ever, Shakespeare. Has yes. Sondheim ever done Shakespeare? I don't we'll think so. We'll find out. Go ahead. So. Um, anyway, he's, he's very Shakespearean at times, though. Anyway, so the a girl whose father is forcing her to marry someone she doesn't love runs away. The boy who the father has promised her to runs after her. And in the meantime, she's with... Uh, her, her, the, her, the boy she wants to marry. The important part is the, the fairies. The important part is, yes, it's a fa there are a bunch of fairies in the forest, and one of them has a servant named Puck, who um, in this particular production seems to be a uh, cross. He is, it's uh, Catherine Hunter. That's actually a, a boy. No, no, I'm sorry. It is, it is a woman. A girl. It is, it is a girl. I'm sorry. She, she comes off as a boy very. Uh, she, she's wearing a derby and a suit, mm -hmm. and she has a, her voice is very deep, and she kind of looks like a cross between uh, Joel Gray's MC and Cabaret with like a dash of Stan Laurel. <laughs> and through a series of, of, of mishaps, both men end up rejecting this girl. One of them start, and both going on another girl who wants the guy who's in, who's promised to the Charlie, first girl. Everybody yeah. knows the story okay. of Midsummer Night's Well, I didn't Dream. know it. It's very confusing. Wow. They, they have to list it. Well, I thought I knew it, but okay. they, they list it in here. And then there's one guy running around with donkey head, but since this is a Julie Taymor play, the mouth is animated. I see. But that's bottom. I mean, he's one of the, he's one yes. of the guys putting on the play, and he's turned into a right. donkey well, by no, the no. fairy. Well, no, no. He just gets the head. 
Yes, but he's turned into it. Right. He, he wears an ass's head, right? Because he's an right. ass. Is the and reason, and right. and ends up being romanced by the fairy queen exactly. due to some mischief by Puck right. and, and right. his master. Anyway, the bottom line is the whole thing here is the staging, and you expect some special right. staging. So from did we get it? Well, you get it for the um, dream sequences, uh -huh. but you don't get it before. Really? And, well, she tries. I mean, the, she, when, wow. the, when the workers put on their play, she has some very nice shadows to uh -huh. make it look like a silent film. Uh -huh. But really, those parts are very dull, but that's about a third of the show. Wow. So it makes a difference. It's not like, okay, we've got two minutes here and then yeah, off no, to I'm dreamland. Surprised. But she's got people flying around. She's She has a very little puppetry. The donkey head is probably is the... It's funny you say, because we expect puppets because right, it's Julie Taymor. Right. right or, so. you know, some, some like, uh, there's a big trap door and mm -hmm. there's a, this is a thrust stage. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about this theater is not normally something like this is you just have an orchestra. Mm -hmm. But here you have a mezzanine and a balcony surrounded on it. So mm -hmm. it, I, I kind of felt I was in like a royal box. That's nice. Too, um, but I still had a very good view of it. It's a mm -hmm. very innovative theater and I'm told that it can be set up in, in many ways. Right. She also has what for lack of a better term is an elevator in the back of the stage so people can go up uh -huh. and down and uh -huh. they fly on the wires and it's all very, very nice. I mean, it the costumes and the puppetry is nowhere near as elaborate as The Lion King. The flying is nowhere near elaborate as Spider-Man. So you know what it sounds like. If yeah. I just may for a second, I I got to see the Her Magic Flute mm -hmm. a couple of years ago for New Year's Eve. That right. was a big deal. We went to see that, and there was a lot of that because I saw a photograph mm -hmm. of what looked like a giant bear, right. and it was done with sheets. Right. And it did, and she has something like that in this one too, as a magic thing. I'm not sure mm -hmm. where it comes in, but so I thought maybe you know I, I, you wonder if maybe people have a bag of tricks and that's their bag of tricks. Now I don't know. I didn't see it. I can't comment mm -hmm. yet. I may be able to get out there. It's, right. it's sold out is the problem. I, I think I think what it is is she put some good tricks in mm. there, but she doesn't use enough of them. Right. But, but you know, you have to understand that her background is in Shakespeare. She did a Titus and then she made a movie out of Titus that was sublime. Mm. It was it was the most in innovative film of and staging right. of Titus I've ever seen for that. And there were no puppets in that as I recall. She set it in, in a sort of a, a fascistic Society and it was it was just wonderful. Right. I, I will say that the dr again the dream sequence it's a different stage mm -hmm. and you could call it innovative, mm -hmm. um, but I don't call I don't think it's as creative as some of the work, um, the like the Lion King or even Wandarian. Yeah, see, I didn't see know. Wandarian. Yeah. Um, which, which I, I also prizes, thought was good. Yeah. It, and it was fabulous. And well, she took on that and she built it the Lion King. So, so you're expecting her to kind of build right, here. Right, expectations. So where do, you, where do you go with that? Uh, generous know? three playbills. Wow. I just want to give a tip of the hat to uh, Mandy Meston, who plays Helena, the girl Helena, who loved... Yeah. Helena, Helena, excuse me. No, that's okay. You, you it know, looks like Helena. The girl who the everybody, thing. nobody loves and right. then everybody loves. Right, right, right. And uh, also, I, I kind of liked uh, Max uh, Casella. Oh, I love Frank, Max Frank, Frank, He came out of The Lion King. Yes. We all love him. Frankly, a lot of people are making asses of themselves. He's ooh, just doing it more literally ooh, ooh. in there. <laughs> but this is a theater. I, I, I hope they have I, great stuff to match this theater. Uh, Ma the Michael Shannon is doing a play yeah. out there at the, at the end of the season. I want to go see that. Okay, Night Alive, a new play by Connor McPherson, um, a very prolific uh, Irish writer. And we, mm -hmm. always, we saw the weir this season, you and I at the Irish Rep. Um, and I made comments about the fact that uh, it took place in a bar, and I have a thing about Irishmen and drinking. Right. Well, Connor McPherson did a wonderful article in the Times about the fact that he was an alcoholic for over 20 years, mm. and most of his writing, and again, the Seafarer and other plays, all had alcoholic components to them. This is what I believe the first play that he ever wrote, and he went back to it. And it's a play about a loser. And it's not so much that, he's a, that he drinks, he's just a loser. He, he, he collects bottles and has, lives downstairs. Bottles? And uncle, bottles. Collects empty bottles. You know, the way people collect empty mm -hmm. bottles. Okay. And uh, lives downstairs from his uncle, who's played by uh, uh, Jim Norton. And, but the guy playing him, by the way, the loser, is Kieran Hines. I don't know if you remember Kieran Hines from the Sea Fair. He was the devil. Um, th I love this man. I've interviewed him. He is gorgeous. He is fantastic. And he plays this pot-bellied uh, guy who's a loser and he brings a girl home and somehow or another they connect and then it turns out that there's a boyfriend and and mm. and and what happens but it's really it's an anecdote because it doesn't they don't they, they do they make it do they not make it Jim Norton is this comic uncle from upstairs the boyfriend is played by Brian Gleason who is Brendan Gleason's son if you know the Irish actors at all Brendan Gleason has been in a number of number of movies 
And that's the story. I mean, there's not, not much more to it. Uh, the guy does drink too much, and he then stopped drinking. So it's an interesting parallel. I think he went back to it perhaps because he saw parts of himself in it. And he added a scene at the end, which I won't tell about, because it, it, but it's, let's just say that it, it, he puts a positive note on it. And I don't know what he didn't know. It didn't feel like it was going to have a positive thing, so I didn't quite go in with the ending. But I, I felt very good for him getting to do the play that he seemed to want to do. It's called The Night Alive. It was at the Atlantic Theatre Company. It, uh, it was directed by Conor McPherson as well. And uh, I don't know more to say about it, except that it's, it's interesting. Sometimes uh, writers have plays in their bottom drawer, and they really shouldn't come out. We've talked about other writers who've done that. This was a pretty good attempt. At, at, at a play, and I would mm -hmm. give it for the entertainment value. It was just very entertaining while I was there. I would give it 3.5 okay. for that. So. All right. Well, that, that, that sounds decent. Um, it sounds better than Walter Kerr said about uh, Neil Simon when he wrote a play called Star Spangled Girl. I remember Star Spangled Girl. And he said, Neil Simon did not have an idea for a play this season, <laughs> but he wrote one anyway. And when Simon published an, uh, an anthology, uh, uh, the anthology, I have you. it, I own that of anthology, his plays, right. He evaluated each play. He quoted Walter <laughs> Kerr, and he said, thank you, Walter. Ooh. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, okay. well, the other show I saw for this week was The Commons of Pensacola. And this was written by um, actress and playwright Amanda Peet, who was not in the play, but obviously did have an idea for a play this year. And it's a uh, great cast. I mean, Blythe Danner, Sarah Jessica Parker from Sex and the City. And it is a mother-daughter niece play. Mm -hmm. Uh, the niece is uh, Zoe uh, Levin, mm -hmm. and all three generations are at the mom's apartment in Florida. And we are told there is another sister who's not talking to mom, the niece's mother, but we, and we find out why a little later in the play. This is kind of a, um, the mother was married to a Bernie Madoff type guy. And as happened to Bernie, guy got caught. Uh, Mama somehow has scraped together enough to buy mm -hmm. this apartment, and we'll find out how later in the play, and that's a, 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 a bit of a problem. Uh, Parker's character is a failed actress mm -hmm. who is pushing, uh, I guess, 40, and coming to visit her mother and, and trying to get her life in order and trying to connect with her mm -hmm. niece. Yes? I was just going to say, Amanda Pete wrote that part for herself and then decided to give it to a different actress, which I thought was interesting. Well, that worked very well with Carl Reiner, wrote uh, yeah, the Rod uh, and then gave it to Dick Van Dyke. And here it works well. There, there are good performances mm -hmm. given. Mm -hmm. The play is decent. I liked the twist, which when it turns out, um, Mommy may not have been as clean as everyone thought she was. Oh, well, I, I think just gave away the whole well, thing. Well, but well I, won't okay. give, I won't go into <laughs> details. I said may. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> may. Innocent until proven guilty. Mm -hmm. And then it, it sets up the dramatic pauses between Danner and Parker. Mm -hmm. Both wonderful actresses. Mm -hmm. uh, the play, though, comes out a little on the light side. I mean, was it, it a comedy or is it not? I think it was supposed to be a drama. Oh, so there, it's a dramedy. There, there, it's one yes, of those, there, yeah. there were a couple of parts here. It would have made a great movie of the week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, enjoyable. I like the cast. Story did hold me. Hold me. I there were twists. The, the major twist that it took, I wasn't expecting, mm -hmm. and I liked that because mm -hmm. I thought originally it was just going to be a mother daughter connected. Who's the director? Play. Who was the director? The oh, director I think I know, is, actually. I think you do too. It's um, Lynn Meadow. Lynn Meadow, yeah. who is the artistic director right. of the Manhattan Theater right. Club, where not coincidentally, this show is taking place. Right, yeah. <laughs> right. And enjoyable, obviously, actresses you you know performers mm -hmm. you want to see, but on the whole, I would only give it three. Oh, okay. Well, so we ha it, we we these were not. This was not a big this night. This was not a great night for yeah. us. Yeah. No. Well. Yeah, but c considering that we're kicking off the beginning of the of the new year, maybe we should start talking about what our expectations for the rest of it. How's that? Well, there is a lot happening. Oh boy, there are a lot okay. of shows coming out, mm -hmm. and a lot of shows in development mm -hmm. that I hope would come out. Like uh, I happen to see Miss Firecracker, uh, Miss Firecracker contest, oh which golly, I love. Talk, it's revival time, man. Right. Everything other thing is a revival. Yeah. Pump Boys and Diet. Well, not everything. They're still I trying. I every other thing. Okay. Is a revival. Well, well, you know. Not everyone was around to see these shows the first <laughs> time. No, Charlie, we're old. I'm old. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, they're reviving the real thing, and I saw the original, uh -huh. which had I, Cynthia I Nixon too. in it, and she yeah. was both blonde and straight back then. Right. Yeah, it's so, true. She was a child also. Yeah. Yeah, that, you're yeah. right. I, so I, there are a couple of plays here that did catch my eye. Some of them are actual revivals, but the one that stands out to me is Aladdin. Now, this is the oh, Disney version yeah. of Aladdin based yeah. on the animated film with Robin yeah. Williams. 
And the reason I'm excited about it is, number one, I really enjoyed the film. It mm -hmm. was a great story. It was a great story. It was, it was during the second Disney Golden Age, mm -hmm. which included Beauty and the Beast, Lion King, and The Little Mermaid. So I'm really... This is not the Sherman Brothers, right? This is post-Sherman Brothers? This, this is very post-Sherman yeah, Brothers, right. yes. Um, and what the thing that made the movie so wonderful mm -hmm. was Robin... Well, one of the things was Robin Williams uh, yeah. and all the quick shtick he could do right. courtesy of cinema and animation. So who's playing that role here? Um, I do not know who, oh. is, uh, who is playing the... the uh, well, well, who's the well, cast that's listed? It's Adam Jacobs, Courtney Reed, James Monroe, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Monroe Eagleheart, Jonathan Friedman, who I assume is playing Jafar, and I believe he played him in the original movie. Really? I think. Okay. I, uh, so someone check this on the in, on the okay. internet and um, and let us know and yeah. Twitter us at uh, two aisle yeah, tweet us or right. hashtag on tweet us excuse me. Um, so I'm curious to see how they're going to do it. They I think they're going to have a challenge. Well, um, the thing that I'm looking forward to is much more imminent because Aladdin's mm -hmm. not due until spring. Uh, in the next month, I'm hoping to see uh, Frank Langella do King Lear out mm. at BAM. This I'm looking forward to, and I will travel to Brooklyn this year. I, that's a vow that I want. My resolution for the year is I'm going to go to Brooklyn. <laughs> there mm -hmm. we go. Um, and that's, that's very high on my list of what I want to see. Mm -hmm. Mothers and Sons brings back not only Terrence McNally, who already did a play, but brings us back. Is this a revival? No, it's a new, it's it's a a new, new play. play. And it stars uh, one of the stars of Cagney and Lacey. You want to guess which one? Tyne, <laughs> yeah. It's Tyne it's Daly, Tyne Daly. who did so well in another uh, one of his she, plays. She did. Masterclass, she mm -hmm. was brilliant. So I'm, yes. I'm hoping for wonderful things. And I'll sl slip another one in. I'll put my, my vote for April is uh, uh, Bullets Over Broadway. I can't mm. wait to see Bullets Over Broadway, which mm. is one of a series of films that are being made at adapted for movies. There's one about Rocky. There's one about Bridges at Madison mm. County. I could go on if I could Aladdin. remember any more. Well, Aladdin, yeah, you're right. right. Um, I, I'm just trying to think. I, I've got okay. them all down here, but I can't. An American in Paris. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that's going to be a tough one. Now, Singing in the Rain was actually another Gene Kelly yeah. film was done, and it was very successful in England, but much less so when they did it on. Uh, Speaking of which, they're, they're trying to bring on the town back as well. So uh, I, I see that yes, and um, but that was an that originally was a stage musical, which was later adapted into yes. a film that starred yes, Kelly and Frank Sinatra, right etc. I'll tell you another thing. I'm looking forward to. I think I s in that same anthology where Simon had. Star Spangled Bird, he also had the Sunshine mm -hmm. Boys. And uh. he said of the Sunshine Boys, a good play, <laughs> the Sunshine Boys. And it is. I, I think if I and had to choose a favorite, it would, would be, be this it. And one. Who's, and who's doing it? Well, that, this is interesting. They only list Danny DeVito. Oh. So uh, he's going to be Willie Clark. That's wow. the uh, Walter Matthau yeah, right, role. Right, right, right. I don't know who's going to be Al Lewis. And wow. it, it's very dependent on it. Yeah. And, I, and I, I, I love the movie. Boy, and his and Devito has been doing a uh, 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 sunny day in Philadelphia yeah. for but a couple of years, yeah, and he's and really getting a new reputation of, uh, as a coarse little, you know, as a coarse little. Uh, an, uh, like, like he didn't have that in taxi. I'm saying, no, I'm saying he's really getting another reputation. Maybe right. I didn't make but that clear. But this is a very different role. I mean, this is a coarse man, and I think Devito is going to be incredibly good in this. It's be interesting. I really want to know who's going to play opposite it? him. Uh, that is uh, Thea Chirac. Don't know her. Not, okay. not someone I don't know. Of uh, Mice and Men is coming mm -hmm. in with, with James Franco. I don't ah. know where he found the time to do it. <laughs> he does, does everything Cabaret else. Cabaret is coming back. Yes. And what fascinates me about this yes. is that I saw a rev I never saw the original Cabaret. This is a revival but of the revival that we but saw. This is <laughs> but, well, that's where I'm going. Yeah. I saw a revival with Joel Grey. Yeah. And it was a nice wow. revival. I enjoyed it. But when I saw the production here with, um, oh boy, I'm, I'm, I'm totally blanking now, with Alan Cummings, Alan Cummings, I felt this is how people must have felt when they first saw it, yeah. saw it with Joel Grey. So I they saw the movie, they put, I didn't see it they on stage. Put in the, yeah. They put the punch back in, they put in the, the rawness right. of the musical. So I'm curious how we atrophied to this version <laughs> also at this you point. Know, we have I'm, so lived long enough. You, uh, you went to the theater at a very, very young age. Yes. I was fairly young when I started going to the theater, and we were in like different, different time spans. But it's so interesting that we, we are seeing revivals of revivals of revivals of revivals. And, and I, I guess that's what theater is all about. You know, we get to, we get to talk well, about all of that and how but wonderful. But the thing is, the theater, again, uh, the performance... Um, 
It's, we're we're okay. getting counted down. Okay, we're getting is. counted yes. down. So I'm going to go very quickly with two other shows I'm looking forward to, two original shows. Well, one is sort of a revival. Make it quick. Bronx Bombers. <laughs> yeah, it's on, New that's York on Yankees now. That's on By the now. same people who brought us Lombardi. Yeah, which I didn't uh, like. So. Violet, which is not a revival, but I think it's its it Broadway. It is a revival. It, I'm, I'm sorry, it is a revival, but it's, it's Broadway. Broadway debut it's as Broadway. well, right. And what fascinates me is less the show, but the fact that Sutton Foster, who I yes. adore, yes. will be in it. And I'm you said seeing two. You said two. Okay. And I, I just thought so of one more. Act one, mm. the Moss Hart story yes. is coming in. And that, yes. I can't wait to see what they're going to do with that. I, ho I, I have high hopes for that. Right, known as a writer primarily with George S. Kaufman, yes. but also the director of the original My Fair Lady and Camelot. And they're going to revive You Can't Take It With You huh. somewhere at the end of the season. So okay. I, think we're, I think we've got a lot of things. You know, let, right. let us hope. Including when we talk Danes about at Sea. Right. Uh, when we talk about yes. them at the uh, and uh, when we when you next see us and we're talking yes. about them, I hope and look that we for have us too <laughs> on the on aisle. The aisle. <laughs>